For all people, the time comes when they must reckon with their history. Hello, my name is Sofia and today I'm going to tell you the story about how Chicano studies became a discipline taught in universities all over the country with the aim of telling the Mexican-American experience from a true and fair perspective. The creation of the field was another consequence of the demonstrations led by Chicanos and Chicanas in high schools and university campuses where they protested social, political, and economic inequalities. As you may know, these demonstrations became known as part of a bigger movement, the Chicano movement, and many reforms occurred after this movement, including the implementation of programs in Chicano studies in many campuses by the late 1960s. These programs allowed Chicanos to accomplish two of their goals, to explain the Mexican-American condition by challenging the American assumptions about Mexican-Americans, and to use this new information to transform their communities. However, the path towards the accomplishments of the goal was very long. Chicanos Chicano academics had to convince the universities that Chicano studies could be taught using a method that fit with the, one, the, with the ones already used there. This was not an easy thing to do. It took years until the Chicano studies began to spread its influence across U.S. campuses. The process can be divided into two moments with two defining documents, the Journal of Contemporary Mexican-American Thought, El Grito, and El Plan de Santa Barbara. Before we look closer into El Grito, El Grito and El Plan de Santa Barbara, we must look at the blowouts that occurred in LA in March of 1968. These blowouts created mobilization on campuses and, end, and ended up being a defining moment for the creation of Chicano studies throughout California. Through these demonstrations, the Chicano community joined their forces and created a sense of hope that, it didn't, that, it, that they didn't previously have. Instead of looking at the American dream as something unattainable for Mexican Americans, Chicanos now had a vision that that study could provide a better understanding of the Mexican American and the condition in which they found themselves. For them, self-determination and participation were the passageway to this vision. This way, Chicano studies could allow Chicanos to ask and answer the questions that they so long wondered about their own culture without fear of judgment. Now going back to El Grito and its role in the creation of Chicano studies. It all began with a group called El Grupo Quinto Sol, established in Berkeley in 1967. The group distributed papers calling for the Mexican-American liberation at meetings, street corners, and community gatherings, demanding recognition of how they struggled for dignity. Some of the papers they distributed were found in El Grito Journal, where there were a variety of essays by Octavio Romano criticizing American social scientists as the responsibles for spreading the idea that the Mexican-American is passive, irrational, and questionable as Americans. They argued that, the social, that social science research didn't investigate knowledge and truth, and therefore decided to explore the real Mexican-American experience by himself. While his aim wasn't necessarily to create a Chicano studies program, his essays provided Chicanos with a weapon because it simply showed them how to correctly develop Chicano-based knowledge. However, while El Grito was useful for this, it didn't have a program explaining how to really change the system on a large scale. This brings us to El Plan de Santa Barbara. As the Chicano movement developed, more and more Chicanos and universities demanded answers to their concerns about the examination of the Mexican-American experience in their education. Therefore, university activists pushed for the creation of a Chicano studies program throughout the Southwest. The students wanted something that could explain how to implement and direct the program, and so was born El Plan de Santa Barbara. This was created by Chicano studies faculty Chicano students, faculty, administrators, and community delegates, and it, and it stated that to solve Chicano's struggle for self-determination and self-liberation, there must be institutions within the universities under Chicano control.
The plan itself began with a manifesto calling for a pushback on racist power structures and assimilation and, pu and a push towards pride and chicanismo. Therefore, then, the document asks for the colleges and universities to act in the following areas. 1. Admission and, recruit and re recruitment of Chicano students and faculty. 2. A curriculum program and an academic major relevant to the Chicano experience. 3. Supports and tutorial programs. 4. Research programs. 5. Publications programs. And 6. Community and cultural and social action programs. And the document also laid out a plan for, organ for organizing exactly this. The curriculum would work in the following way. Lower division courses would affirm the Chicano identity by appreciating the, the Chicano culture. Upper division courses would examine the Chicano experience through history, economics, literature, and other fields. The result would be to provide a coherent and socially relevant education that prepares Chicanos for service to the Chicano community and enriches society. Clearly, then, El Plan did exactly that which the El Grito Journal lacked. It designed the path for success of the implementation of Chicano studies. And that is the reason why it is until today considered, considered a revolutionary document. These here are some pictures that appear throughout the plan. As you can see, some are photos of people in the Chicano movement and others are pieces of art actually drawn by members of the Chicano students' movement. By 1970, there were about 65 campuses in California with some form of Chicano studies that was, that, that was consistent with El Plan. Finally, even though the, ch the struggle was far from ending, Chicanos had access to an education that was relevant to their experience. Since then, ethnic studies departments across the country have grown to include Asian American, Nat Native American, as well as other ethnic studies classes, as you can see in these pictures. These classes free students from a plain Eurocentric education and allow them to understand their individual experiences in a mostly white environment, giving them the tools and skills to respond to the political climates that shape those experiences. Thank you for watching. I leave you now with a quote by Maya Angelou. The more you know of your history, the more liberated you are. Thanks again and have a good day.